Hey guys, it's Sandro here from Carcraft Auto Detail in Melbourne. Today's video is part one of a small series of videos that will look at the process, procedures and techniques I go through when detailing a particular vehicle. This is by no means a concrete plan that is used for every single job. It's just a general guide that relates to this particular detailing job, though many of these steps are applied to most of my work. So where do I start? Step one is finding out what the vehicle is and what the client is looking to achieve. What we have is a silver 2003 Nissan Navara dual cab 4x4. So this particular detail, on the basis of what the owner wants, will be purely an exterior detail, excluding the engine bay and focusing on removing or improving some of the paint scratches and defects a bit of touch up and respraying, as well as restoring shine and lifting oxidation on both the paint and metal surfaces without chasing full paint correction and removing as little as possible paint in the process, all of which needs to fit into a particular budget and time frame. So to put it another way, the customer doesn't want to pay for a body shop to repair or respray and is not looking for perfection just an overall improvement and preservation of the paint. Step two is the history and condition of the vehicle. So once I know what my client's general budget and objectives are, I like to get as much information as possible about the vehicle. This truck is a one owner from new, with low mileage and has been only privately used. It's always garaged and has never been in a major accident. However, I was told that this vehicle is only washed annually and has never had any protection applied. It's had more than its share of scrapes and scratches as well as a decent prang in the rear left corner that was panel beaten and resprayed by the owner himself. So the reason why I like to gain as much information as possible is that it firstly helps me in determining what I need to charge and the detailing options I can give to the client. Secondly, it helps me avoid potential mishaps that can occur, especially when dealing with vehicles that have had cheap repair work done to them. Thirdly, it aids me in managing the customer's expectations and determining what realistic results I can achieve within budget. And lastly, it assists me in planning and preparing the process and time frame I'll need to undertake for this specific job. Step three is the pre-wash inspection. Every quote I give on a detail is conditional on my inspection of the vehicle matching the information the client has given me. Ultimately, it's far better to do a vehicle inspection report after it's been washed and decontaminated, as this gives you a far better and more honest assessment of the paint's condition but it's not always possible or appropriate to do it in that manner. Personally, I like to start by asking the client to point out any existing defects on the vehicle and try to manage their expectations and what can be achieved and accomplished. Secondly, I like to grab my paint inspection light and do a slow walk around the vehicle to gain a better feel for its condition and to spot any further defects that the owner may not be aware of. Thirdly, I will take photos of all the main defects and damage I've come across and record them in my vehicle inspection report. And lastly, I will take my paint thickness readings to include in the report and allow me to better determine how much correction is possible while still being safe and leaving as much clear coat as possible. Recording these things is a great way to safeguard against any potential disputes and claims. It also greatly improves your knowledge of the vehicle's condition and can make for some great before and after photos to showcase your work and abilities. The report is then explained to the client and they need to sign off on it together with the quote before any work commences. I encourage my customers to ask any questions they may have or voice any potential concerns. 
But once both of us are happy, the actual physical detailing work begins. On a side note, vehicle inspection report templates can be found online. However, I didn't find any that suited my particular needs. So I had my ones made up by a graphic designer. Also, I'll add links to my Helenova inspection light and my paint thickness gauge in the description if anyone's interested. As for pricing and what to quote for a job, it really depends on so many particular things, such as where you live, what the market will allow, your level of experience, and how many hours you intend to put into a job. No one but yourself can tell you how much you should charge. Just make sure you can cover your expenses and pay yourself a decent hourly rate that can sustain both your business and your personal expenses. That's it for part one of this video. Stay tuned for part two with some more hands-on detailing which will hopefully be posted soon. I really hope you enjoyed and found this video useful. Please like, comment and subscribe to show your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.